Hey guys, Ryan here for Bender Wins. Hope everyone's doing well today. Here with your daily free picks. All right, guys. So I have five total plays today, three free picks, two additional in masterclass for today. Uh, before I get into it, guys, talk a little bit about yesterday. Yesterday, guys, um, basketball is on point. Uh, we had one basketball in free play, one basketball in masterclass. Uh, won them both fairly easily. And um, yeah, football though. Different story yesterday in football. Um, all right. So there's, there's a lot of things could be said about yesterday's football game. I don't think that, um, I don't think many people saw, uh, that result, especially at halftime, um, 17, nothing. Yeah. I would have believed 17, nothing at halftime. As a matter of fact, I'd say, yeah, 17, nothing sounds about right. Um, not for Cincinnati though, not for Cincinnati. Okay. Look, we had the under in the game guys. Um, it looked, it looked like it was an under game. It really did the way it kind of played out, but um, you know, I, I know some people message me and I kind of agree, uh, you know, pretty miserable pass interference call um, at the goal line that might have cemented our, our win. There, there's a few people that message say, you know, hey, that was pass interference. I think it was pass interference. And others say it absolutely wasn't pass interference. But the reality is, look, three turnovers in the first half resulting in 17 points. Um, you know, Pittsburgh eventually is going to get some points. So, I mean, at that point, I see 17 nothing, and yeah, it's it's looking like it's under, but um, I don't know. It, it, it I guess it wasn't meant to be, but uh, I, I will say something. I, I, it reminded me of something when I'm watching um, Juju Smith Schuster do his little dance on uh, you know on the other team's um, logo in the middle of the field. Uh, so, I mean, what are my thoughts on on players doing that? Okay, look. I played, I played hockey. I played a very high level of hockey, guys. I uh, never quite made the NHL, but I played a high level of hockey. And uh, this, uh, this is kind of, um, I guess, maybe a hockey thing. But in hockey, guys, um, there's certain things you don't put up with, okay? It's just like an unwritten rule. You just, you don't put up with certain things. Uh, I can tell you guys, we played against a team north of Toronto. And um, every time we played these guys, they beat us. And I, I think... At the time, at the time this game happened, I'd have to say there were probably like 35 wins, like three losses on the season. Um, they won guy on their team, led the league in penalty minutes. And the first time, so we, we come on where their arena was when we played away games, where their arena was, you kind of come on from the same side of the rink and, you know, you go to your side, they go to your side. Well, I noticed they had to skate down the far end to the home side. And the first game I saw it, I saw this guy as he went by our bench. There was no one on our bench. But he, he spat on our bench. And uh, I thought, like, you know, that that's that's not going to fly. Uh, a couple other guys noticed it. Well, we talked about it. Nothing really happened that game. But the very next game we played those guys, uh, exact same thing happened. Guy skates by our bench. Again, nobody on the bench. We're just coming onto the ice to start the game. Guy spits on our bench again. Well, um, first shift of the game, I go out there. Uh, puck goes deep. He goes in the corner. I go in and cross check right here. I don't know, nine or 10 stitches. Uh, it's the only time I've ever been suspended for five games. It was the longest suspension of my life. Actually, I've been suspended a few other times for other various things. But look, the reality is, um, whether he knew what he, you know, why he got that cross check or not. Um, I don't know. But you know what, I'll tell you something, he was lucky, because I was actually going for his teeth and I missed. So um, bottom line, guys, in hockey, disrespectful things like that, you're, you're getting your comeuppance. And look, I haven't, I played a little bit of football, but I didn't play enough football to really understand, you know, the, the kind of code behind it. But to me, guys, I have to think that Cincinnati is watching this clown go out and dance on their logo and, you know, post this stuff on TikTok. And obviously they're on a, they're on a two game losing streak. So, you know, how his teammates don't grab him and say, bro, we just lost two games in a row. What are you doing? Okay, what are you doing? Because in hockey, I will tell you guys, and those of you guys who played a high level of hockey, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, you know what? When you're winning, the dressing room is, is juvial and everyone's happy and you're doing your thing. But I'll tell you, when you're losing, when you're even a couple game losing streak, um, you know, and you're, you're mouthing off or you're acting like a fool or a clown, uh, your teammates will sort that out. Your coach doesn't have to. Your teammates will sort that out, whether it's, you know, done in private by a team captain, pull you aside and say, you know, smarten the hell up. Or, you know, if you get a couple guys that just, you know, they give you the look, 
And you know what it means, right? So uh, I don't know if that's a thing in football, but how his teammates don't go to him and say, man, we lost two in a row. Um, you know, what are you doing? Why? <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. So anyways, guys, look, the bottom line is um, that, okay, I want to say one more thing. That team, that team, guys, that we played, uh, I got a five-game suspension, um, came back. I knew this guy was going to fight me next time we played, and somehow, through the grace of God, he didn't because um, he would have cleaned my clock. There's no question about it. Uh, but here, here's the interesting thing, okay? Every time we played those guys, played them two more regular season games before the playoffs, guys, every time we played them, we smoked them, okay? We came out and that game was like circled on our calendar. It's like, we're we're gonna whoop the shit out of these guys. And the coolest thing was, we met them the second round of the playoffs and knocked them out four straight. This is a team, this is a team that ended up losing only about 10 games out of 80 some games all year long. All year long, including like their playoff run. Okay, this is the motivation sometimes that teams need. And I just don't understand why other teams are just willing to give it to them, right? So anyways, it is what it is, guys. Um, we won basketball, we lost football, so let's move on to today. Before I get in today, guys, really quickly, I want to do another question and answer. Uh, this question, guys, comes from Johnny Patino. So Johnny P. All right, Johnny P. Um, good question, okay? And this is a question I think a lot of people, as they're getting into sports betting, um, you know, they're asking these questions and they're really, really good questions. So how should I base my bankroll? Should I base my bankroll on my income or basically what I feel like I can lose? Good question. Guys, bankroll, especially, you know, when you're starting out, bankroll has to be um, your money on the side, okay? The side money, um, it's what you can, you, you feel you can afford to lose, okay? And I always say, guys, look, never, never, never bet on credit, guys. Um, I, I've seen through other people um, the results of what happens to people who bet on credit and cannot pay, um, you know, I've heard, I've heard all kinds of things. Okay. You know, people say, Oh, you know, I, I've known my bookie for years. He's a good friend of mine. You know, he has me over for barbecues and all this stuff. Yeah. You're putting money in his pocket, but believe me. Okay. Trust me. If you don't believe anything else, I'm telling you, if you think your bookie is your friend, wait till you don't have the money to pay him. And you'll believe me. He was not your friend. Okay. So it's so important that you do not bet on credit as for how much you should base your bankroll on. Look, I'm a big proponent of adding to your bankroll, okay? Um, you know, it has to be, you know, what you can afford to add after everything else is taken care of, okay? So what are we talking about, guys? We want to take care of our, you know, our mortgage, our car payments, our food bills, our all our other, all our other bills. We want to set a little bit aside so we can, you know, we can enjoy life. We can, well, at some point we'll be able to go out again into the public and do things, but um, that kind of stuff. Then look, uh, you got to put some money away for savings, okay? Like, you know, the rainy day fun because, you know, hey, it, it's it's raining out these days, isn't it? Um, the other thing, you know, investments and stuff. Then what do you got left after that, guys? You add that to your bankroll, okay? Add that to your bankroll. So you got to take care of life first. There's no question about that. You should never be in a situation where you're using money to bet on sports that you need for other things, Okay. Even even professional sports bettors, guys, we have a set aside, dedicated bankroll that we most of us have grown over years. Some people might have some backers, but you know most of us have stuff we've grown over many many years. And at the bottom line, guys, we're we're never taking from you know what we actually would need to uh, you know cover our commitments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, okay, so um, you know. With a professional, guys, you're adding to your bankroll now because of sports betting wins. You know, you're not adding because of your job. But, um, you know, so many people are in such a rush to, like, grow their bankroll as fast as possible. But it, it doesn't have to be that way, right? It's like, you know, people people do those pre-authorized payments into the mutual funds and stuff like that, right? Every single month, the bank takes $25. They take $50 do the same thing with your, you know, with your bankroll, right? Like just, you know, you don't have to have a separate account, but go out and, you know, figure the, Hey, I can afford to add 50 bucks or I can afford to add a thousand dollars a month, whatever the case may be in your current situation. I can afford to add this on. And, um, that's how you grow your bankroll. So you grow your bankroll organically because you're winning bets and it's growing and you're continuing to resize it, but you're also adding to it as you see fit. So I hope that answered your question it was a good question. Uh, Johnny Patino, but 
Um, it's, it's never based on your income. It's never based on, you know, you, you might, you might have a, you know, 150 K a year income, but not a lot of disposable income. So I certainly can't say, okay, you know, a 10% should go towards your bankroll so that everyone is different and, and you'll have to approach that uh, yourself. So, uh, all right guys, let's, um, let's talk some picks here. Um, and you know what, actually, sorry, last, very last thing, I promise, guys. It's just, this is more of a question because I'm still curious, guys. Look, I told you, I played, I played a little football. I played high school football. I played cornerback, um, was not a great football player and never really got into it. And football's not that big in Canada, okay? So I don't completely understand the culture. So maybe my hockey reference that I gave you guys early, earlier, um, maybe I'm out of line. Maybe like that's something, hey, you do that in football and it's okay. I mean, I don't think that's the case. But if, if anyone here has played like a high level competitive football, um, you know, whether like we're talking like Texas high school football or we're talking like, you know, uh, you know, a higher level in terms of uh, college ball, uh, let me know. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm speaking at a turn here because I know, I know for sure something like that wouldn't fly in hockey. Um, I just don't know in football. So maybe I'm, maybe I'm offside. Maybe, maybe I'm right. I don't know, but let me know if you, if you guys have played some higher level football. All right. Three plays today, guys. Um, first one guys in college basketball. Okay. College basketball guys. Um, I have two, uh, what do I have? Two college basketball plays today. Um, I have one for you guys, one in masterclass. Both of them are added games, added games, guys. You can find those because they're like the six digit game indicators as opposed to the three digit ones um this game guys abilene christian versus arkansas yes abilene christian versus arkansas and some of you are going to say who's abilene christian but hey acu guys abilene christian university versus arkansas we are going over 140 and a half points okay so over 140 and a half points next guys um we are going to uh we're going to NCAA football game, guys. We have Central Florida, BYU. Um, I have a different way to play this, okay? Different different way to play this. Um, look, I, I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a shootout. Um, you know, yeah, there, there's a little bit of there's a little bit of wind. I mean, I don't think it's going to stop these guys. To be perfectly honest, we're talking like 11, 12 mile an hour wind, 20 mile an hour wind. Different story, but. Um, you know, these guys are going to put up points guys, but the way I'm going to approach this game, um, I'm going to take the two team totals in this game. Okay. So central Florida going to go over 34. Okay. For one unit. So central Florida over 34, one unit, and then we're going to go BYU over 40 and a half for one unit. They're both minus 110. Um, I'm just going to take them how they sit. I was toying with the idea of actually uh, buying the lines up and, and us getting some juice on it. But you know what, where the totals are right now, um, I, I think it's good value. And, and I'm just, I'm okay doing that. We'll just pay the minus 110 and we'll take it at its current point. So again, guys, um, we're just gonna take both team totals in that over 34. Um, so UCF, so Central Florida guys, over 34. BYU over 40 and a half, one unit each, okay? So let's hope they get into a massive battle and, and put up a huge total. And uh, that's it, guys. So if you're interested in Masterclass, guys, BenderWins.com. I have an NBA play for you guys today. I have another college basketball play. And uh, yeah, that's it for today, guys. So thank you very much. And as always, have a very lucky day.